And this is the mother of all videos, the mother of all altercations. It belongs to the Merseyside Pensioners Association, who've gone viral across the entire world with this. Take a look. I don't know how you've got the guts to come to this city after you have been being interviewed and doing columns for the Sun newspaper, after the way we as a city were abused and after the way we as a city, the Hillsborough um, victims, were abused by that paper and you've come here. Secondly, you lied to us about uniting the party. I'm still a Labour Party member and you've expelled and witch-hunted in the most vicious way I've ever seen in my lifetime. And I've been a member of the Labour Party for a long, long time. You have absolutely said you had ten pledges, you were going to carry on the Corbyn legacy. And ever since you've done nothing but distance yourself from the ideas which tens of thousands of people joined the Labour Party to support. And you, all you've done is feed into the Tory ideology of not supporting strikes, of carrying on with the privatisation of our health service. You're doing everything yeah, to feed I'm into a Tory victory. Because we may as well have a Tory if we have a person like you who lies to the party it's in dishonesty thank you very much. and our health right, service is going right much. down the pan and you have a big responsibility to the working class people right. of this country. Can you move back, please? Excuse me, excuse you me. Back, You're just, don't be getting physical no, with I'm not me. touching you. you can, can you move me. back then, please? You're touching my breast. Can you move back, please? Now move back. Now, can you move back, I want back, to go please? to the toilet. Toilet's over that way. Now that is courage, that's what you call speaking truth to power. Mind you, although he's sat there like a block of wood, like a big stumer, without a flicker of understanding or reflection, visible at least on his face, I can't believe that man's a Queen's counsel. I wouldn't pay him to represent me on a parking offence. But the very next day, he took condign justice to its nth degree. He expelled that old lady, that battling pensioner. He expelled her from the Labour Party after decades of membership because he knew he'd been filmed being called out accurately and powerfully by an old lady. And she's with us now. Not so old, actually, Audrey. You're a glamorous pensioner, I've always thought. Thanks for joining us on the Mother of All talk shows. For, the, uh, for those that are not amongst the millions uh, that have now watched that video, what did it feel like? Well, very, very satisfying, might I say. Um, I think we just at the, at the end of the day, I said what a lot of people wanted to say. Can you hear me? Yeah. I mean, was it premeditated? Oh, did you know he was going to be did you know he was going to be there? Uh, had you did you have a script? It didn't look like you did. No, I, I knew he was going to be there, but I didn't have a, a script. I um definitely knew I wanted to tackle him over the Hillsborough. I wanted to tackle him about the witch hunt. I knew I wanted to tackle him about um, his betrayal of uh, the Corbyn movement. And uh, I was very angry that um, the tactics he's adopted since it, the dishonesty of him. And I just really wanted to uh, be as powerful as I can. But yet, yet I did know he was going to be there. Um, I found out, I can't say how, but I did find out. And um, the people outside were members of my pensioners' association. I'm uh, the secretary of the Merseyside Pensioners' Association. And I'm so proud of what we did. I'm so proud of all the decades of experience of activism, you know, that were there that day and behind us. You know, all our members were in support of that action. So, yeah, it was great. It was great to do it. And it was great to start the floodgates because it really has started the floodgates, hasn't it? <laughs> People have gone absolutely bizarre. It really has. It, it really has. But did he, did he have nothing to say? He didn't look like he... He looked like a particularly hand husband getting a big row off his wife. 
he was stunned. He, had, he seemed to be struck dumb. Well, don't you think people like him don't think they have to be accountable to anybody? And he certainly wasn't going to be accountable to a member, uh, you know, an old woman in Liverpool. I mean, if that had been from the home counties, he might have said, uh, oh, sit down, have a glass of wine. You know, he might have done that. Um, but he didn't know how to handle um, what I said at all because it was all 100% true. And as far as saying anything, um, I did mention um, the anti-Semitism, which isn't in the film. And I did mention the fact that I'd won uh, a libel case against the Jewish Chronicle and so on. And um, it was just struck dumb. And I said, I've sent you a letter. And he's, the only thing he said is, well, I'll read it. Um, and that was it. So in effect, he said nothing. Um, and the letter was about who, um, yeah, yeah. my suspension, you know, because I'd been suspended that many times. Well, I don't know how many times I've lost track, but um, they just do nothing. There's no, the Ford report, just read the Ford report, you know, the games they play, the lack of transparency, the lack of fairness, the absolute criminality from somebody who's supposed to be, you know, Top, top legal, legal brain. He's doing it deliberately, isn't he? But considering, considering how much money they spend on spin doctoring and so on, they all handled it so very badly. Uh, everybody knows, it's rudimentary, that if you've got someone, particularly a woman, particularly a pensioner, uh, who's, who's giving you a row, the last thing you do is ask a goon to manhandle her, but that's what happened on the video. Yeah, I'm going to be speaking to a lawyer because I want to know that man's name. I want to know his name. I want to know what role he was playing there. And I want to know what right he had to manhandle me. And uh, a lawyer is going to be getting in touch with him. So I haven't had the time to uh, get started yet, but I certainly will. And uh, I have been offered help, you know, by, by lawyers. I mean, I've been very lucky uh, that I always seem to get some good support behind me when I need it and I've never had to pay anything out in legal fees. And I've had some good victories in my life against um, injustice. And I think it's just because I've always fought very hard. I, and very I feel determined. the, yeah. You, you've had many uh, victories because you've, you've got bottle. You are a courageous person and you know that what you're saying is unanswerably true. Um, but why are you wasting your time in the Labour Party, Audrey? Now that they've booted you out, it's time to call that a day and look for something else now, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. Can I say, George, I am a trade unionist first and foremost. I am a trade unionist. And that's where the power lies at the present time. When the war was raging in, against Iraq and Afghanistan and they were trying to build up to a war in um, Iran and so on, I was absolutely 100% committed to the anti-war movement. And I still get involved. Uh, you know, I organise... Um, demonstrations and public meetings and, and we had Tariq Ali, I organised Tariq Ali to come down um, only be just before Christmas. So, you know, it's not one thing or the other. You know, I'm involved in a local uh, community group uh, for um, a local garden that the council wanted to hive off and build on and, and we fought and won that. We put bees on there and we have it for the community now. There's not just one battle to be had. And the Labour Party has never been the real vehicle for change. It was only because we had Corbyn, you know. Uh, and, and when you think about it, George, you were witch-hunted. And you were witch-hunted in the Labour Party for the absolutely tremendous stand you took. You were a giant, well, you still are, but you were a giant the way you took on Tony Blair and the way you led that movement, one of many who led that movement, but you were, and you were witch-hunted. 
So we've all had our space in the Labour Party and battled. And, you know, there's life outside the Labour Party. The Labour Party is, uh, you know, a bit of a desert now. The democracy is gone. The leadership's gone. The uh, And we only had it for a blink of an eyelid. We only had it while we had Corbyn and um, policies that were worth fighting for. To be honest with you, I just um, have stayed in there to fight for those ideas because you fight for them wherever you stand, wherever organisation you're in. Well, you uh, fight. I've, uh, I, 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 I've absolutely no doubt that you will continue to fight and I hope to uh, be fighting alongside you. Maybe we can team up. Audrey White, thanks for joining us on the mother of all talk shows. Hats off to the Merseyside Pensioners Association and a big raspberry to Keith Starmer, you coward, you big girl's blouse.